Well, good morning, everybody. It's the end of 2023. Here we are. I, I, you know, I was reflecting on this in many different settings lately. Do you feel like this year went by like that? I can't believe that tomorrow's 2024, and here we are on the brink of a new year, and we're on the brink of a new series, which we'll get to in a moment. But before we go too much further, I need some volunteers to help me. I have a few questions, or one question, it's not even a few, but I spoke to two young men. Are you guys ready? One of the two? All right, so whichever one of you, come on up, and I need one other volunteer, one other person, one other kid, not to, oh. All right, so what's up, my man? How you doing, Liam? Good. All right, I've got a question for both of you. Are you ready, Peyton? All right, so first of all, face everybody else so they can see your smiling face, Liam. Turn around, face, smile at your parents. Do you see him out there? Your dad's the good-looking one on the aisle. You see him? Yeah, there he is. So um, why don't you tell everybody your name? My name's Liam. Liam. So Liam, everyone give it up for Liam for coming up here. And the same for you, Peyton. Peyton. <laughs> That's one of my favorite tricks. Everyone, Peyton. Now I have a question. Yeah. I have a question that I need both of you to answer. And Liam has a little advantage, Peyton, because I prepped him before, so he has his answer ready. So I'll give you more time to think. So the question is simply, what is something that you have been chosen for at some point in your life? It can be something at school, you were chosen to be a part of this, that, or the other thing. It can be something, a team you made, just something that you have been chosen for. Are you ready? What do you- so a while back in third grade, uh-huh. my... Um, I got picked to be in like a Lego club and during school. Whoa. How do you get into a Lego club? I don't know. I think you just. <laughs> Can I come to your Lego club? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> well, so Liam's been picked for a Lego club. That, now, any Lego builders, doesn't that sound wonderful? All right, here you go, Peyton. Something that you have been chosen for at some point. Uh, so this year, my school counselor decided that she was going to start up with this, like, introduction thing, because we have new students coming in throughout the whole school year. Okay. So me and her are going to run it, and it's, like, kind of like just getting new kids into the school and trying to, like, get them adjusted and have, like, multiple friends that they can rely on. So they can jump in right away. Well, that's really cool. Which school do you go now? Kenmore East High School. Kenmore East does that. That's really cool. I wish, yeah. So let's give it up for my two volunteers. Thank you, guys. You can have a seat. I appreciate your help. So, yeah, we are chosen for all kinds of things, whether it be a Lego club at school, which when I was Liam's age, if there was a Lego club, that would have been the best thing ever, or Peyton to be selected to help welcome new kids into her school. That is pretty cool and a high honor to be the one that is selected to be a part of something like that. One of my worst memories, though, of school was when we used to be on the field choosing, whether it be football teams or dodgeball teams or anything like that, the fear of being selected last. Anybody ever have that fear? You're, it, it just to be petrifying. You're like, so you always wanted to be the team captain so that you got to do the choosing and you weren't the one who was maybe left out. Um, but maybe you've been selected for an award or students, maybe a play at school or to do a solo in the concert, whatever the case may be. For adults, maybe you've been chosen for a promotion at work, something that's gone well, a special project, something like that. The feeling that somebody chose you for something is actually very powerful. What it's saying is that whoever did the selecting looked at all the options, all that was available, and they pointed at you and said, I want him or her. That's who I want. There's something very powerful about being chosen. We just sang about it in the songs. We didn't pick those songs just by chance. They all speak to where we're going today. Our next series that we're going to invest in, as you can see on the screen to my right, your left is called Sincerely. Through the series Sincerely, we're going to look at the letter of 1 Peter. 
Peter was writing to, to churches that are in what is now Turkey. He was writing things that they needed to know because they were about to undergo and experience persecution. And it's thought often that Peter, through the power of the Holy Spirit, was preparing them for what lies ahead. And over the next weeks in January and beyond as we're in this series, I want to encourage you to engage with it because in our world today, there are difficulties at foot. And to know that God is with us in the middle of those is very important. But today we're just going to look at the first two verses of this entire letter. That's right, a whole 25 minutes on two verses. So I hope you're ready for it. <laughs> but it is really interesting. Now, back in the day, Peter didn't email the churches in Turkey. He didn't have a text message. He sat down and he wrote his words out. I imagine he sat there with a candle in my mind's eye with his pen dipping at the ink, and he wrote down exactly what he thought these churches needed to know. And as he wrote the words and the letter was delivered, it went from church to church, and it was read in such a way that people understood that this was Peter's, these were Peter's words, and as, as if he was sitting there right in front of them sharing these thoughts. Receiving a letter back in ancient times was a very special thing. And I dare to say we enjoy receiving letters and cards and handwritten notes today too, don't we? In fact, I want to share one of those with you that I received. A Father's Day card. This one brings tears to my eyes. Dear Father, my daughter wrote. You know when it's that formal that there's something to it. I hope your Father's Day turns out to be everything you ever dreamed. But since your perception of reality appears askew, <laughs> I give you the real order of importance of holidays. And then one, two, and three were a combination of her birthday, Christmas, and Easter. <laughs> Guess which was first. And then all the way down, she has an arrow, and she says, number 56 is Father's Day. She said, to put things in perspective, serial day is number 34. <laughs> All jokes aside, I love you and appreciate everything that you do. Love, Julia. And then she signed it, your favorite child. <laughs> Why do we save things like that? Why will I never get rid of this my entire life? Because when somebody takes time to write you a letter, to make you a card, to communicate in that way, it just hits different. In our world today, we can send emails or texts, but I guarantee when you see an envelope in the mail that is written specifically to you, it's just different. So as Peter is sending out this letter, as it's going to the churches in, Tur the churches in Turkey, that's exactly what's happening. They were waiting with anticipation to have this letter read in front of them. And as Peter begins the letter in verse 1, he says this, this letter is from Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Right from the very beginning, he sets his credentials. He says, you need to listen to what I'm writing because me, Peter, I'm an apostle of Jesus. What he is saying and what they understood is Peter would be saying, I walked with him, I talked with him, I laughed with him, I ate with him, I slept in the tent next to his, we were together for three years. I saw and understood everything he did and I'm writing to you as somebody who's informed by his life, not just a, a tangential person who saw him once or twice, I was with with him every day. So you need to listen to what I say. That's what that sentence means. When Jesus was here, the disciples, Peter was a disciple at that point, he was with him every day. Why he calls himself an apostle? Because after Jesus died and rose again and ascended, he sent his disciples into the world, changing their title to apostle, to sent one, to people who would bring the good news to all the known world world. In this opening phrase, Peter is saying, I'm legit. I knew Jesus when he was here on earth. You need to listen to what I have to say. 
I bet as that line was read, wherever this letter was read, people were were riveted from the first moment. Oh, he's serious. What he says really matters. And let's see what happens next. But before I do, kids, those who received the little bag when you came in, I need you to take out the fidget spinner. Now you wish you all had a bag, don't you? And I also need you to take out these little stickers that say Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and God. And I'm going to read a verse, the next verse in 1 Peter. And as I do, I'm going to say the words. These words on these stickers are actually in the Scripture. And when I read them, I want you to put them on the fidget spinner. Now, there's four parts. There's the three outside in the middle. And let me give you a clue. God goes in the middle, okay? So I gave you a freebie. You know where that one goes. So when I get to it, you just know God goes in the middle. But as I read this scripture, as I say, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, put the stickers where they belong, okay? Easy task, but here's the scripture. I am writing, Peter continues, I am writing to God's chosen people. Just hold on to the word chosen for a moment. Chosen people who are living as foreigners in the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. God, the first sticker in the middle. The Father, place the Father sticker on one of the little pieces. Knew you, and here's that word again, chose you long ago. And his spirit, take the Holy Spirit sticker, and his spirit has made you holy. As a result, you have obeyed him and have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Peter starts off this letter in such a profound way. First, he establishes his credentials, and then he says, and he's writing, that you are a chosen people living as foreigners in this land of Turkey, and God the Father knew you and chose you long ago. We'll get to that in a minute because it's so good. And the Spirit has made you holy. As a result, you have obeyed him and been cleansed by the blood, cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. When they received this letter, they knew it was going to be good, but then he opens with that. Are you kidding me? He gets right into the Trinity right off the bat, and he begins to explain how that all works. And that's why we gave you your little spinners with those stickers on it, because this represents the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, which are all God. They're the three persons of the Trinity, of the triune God. And I know for a children's week, this is, this is deep, but I think it's important for all of us to hear that. God exists, and there'll be a slide up on the screen, God exists in three persons. The Father, the Creator, the one who, who spoke things into existence, the Holy Spirit, who came at Pentecost as tongues of fire descended from heaven on those who were present, and they began to speak in different languages as the Spirit enabled them, and the Holy Spirit came to the world. God the Spirit. And then God the Son, as Jesus came and was born of the Virgin Mary on Christmas, which we just celebrated, the incarnate God was here, God with skin on for the whole world to see and no. You see, God is Father. God is Holy Spirit. And God is Jesus. Now, God, Father is not Spirit. And Spirit is not Son. And Son is not Father. Now, as you explain this, it's often really interesting. Um, it's super hard to explain all that God is. It would be like trying to describe the game of dodgeball to a guinea pig. 
as we try to fully understand the vastness and the majesty and the power of God, our brains just aren't able to do so. Nor do we probably have the words that could adequately describe who God is. But throughout Scripture, in this verse, in creation, throughout the New Testament, we see that God is present as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That all three persons of the Trinity work in our world in incredible ways. And as we look at the Trinity, I hope you have this in your mind. Now, every illustration breaks down. People are already saying, well, the fidget spinner does this, it doesn't do that. In this, it's a, it's a representation of how God and the three persons of God work together, how they are one. And Peter makes it clear in this letter, but I hope that you grasp that for yourself. God created it all, and, and the Son and the Spirit were present in creation. Jesus was sent here to die. God with skin on, incarnate so that we can have life. And then the Holy Spirit came to empower us to live victorious lives. Father, Son, and Spirit. Well, back to the passage in 1 Peter. We're going to take a look at the different verses. And the first is, God the Father knew you and chose you long ago. Some of you need to hear today that God chose you. God chose you. If you feel unseen, if you feel like the world passes you by and you're, you go unnoticed, throw that out of your mind because God chose you. In Psalm 139, the psalmist writes that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, that we were knit together in our mother's womb, that, that God knit us together in our mother's womb exactly how you are Psalm 139 goes on to say you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that God knows all the delicate, intricate parties, parts of who you are. You are a masterpiece, and God chose you. At creation, God created everything. The Father created all we see. He created the, 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 form, the, the planet, the water, the land, the animals, and that all of those things, God said, they're good. But then he created humans, and he said they are very good. You are very good. Some people get hung up on this. We have self, self issues, and we don't look at ourselves in the proper light. Let me say this as clearly as I can. You are chosen by God, and you are are very good. That's good news. The scripture goes on. God chose you, and then Peter says this, his his spirit has made you holy. God has made you holy by his Holy Spirit. Now, when you say the word holy, all these ideas may flood your mind. What holy means is you're set apart. You're different. The Holy Spirit does a work in your life, and you are set apart. You're different from others in the world. You are are his holy people. We are his holy people. The work of the Holy Spirit has set us apart from others, and we are holy. You might be thinking, I'm not very holy. I'm just going by what the scripture says. His spirit has made you holy, set apart. Set apart, and and if you got deeper, set apart for good work, set apart to make our world a better place, set apart to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Everywhere you go, we are a holy people, a royal priesthood. We are set apart. But how does that all happen? So, so you're saying, God the Father chose you, the Holy Spirit makes us holy. 
But we need to continue and see Jesus' part in this equation because as the letter continues, as a result, you have obeyed him and have been cleansed. You have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't let that, don't, don't forget that. Why did Jesus come at Christmas? To cleanse us from our sin. To take the burden of our sin and shame. To take it on himself so that we can be clean as white as snow on a January, hopefully January morning. In your bag, you have this hand sanitizer. This is one way of saying you're cleansed. It says it kills 99.99% of germs. What about that one percentage? Although this only kills 99.99%, Jesus takes away all of our sin. As we call on his name. So Peter is packing this letter from the very beginning with all this truth. God has cleansed you through his son, Jesus Christ. He has taken away your sin. He has made you as white as snow. Now, I don't know what else to tell you on New Year's Eve that would be better news than that. That you are chosen, that the Holy Spirit makes you holy, and that Jesus' blood washes away your sin. That's a good way to wrap up the year. And you know what the beauty of all of this is? Those of us who call ourselves Christians, who walk in the ways and the teachings of Jesus, we don't have to live like the world lives because we are set apart. The stuff that the world engages in, the way people talk, the conversations that go on, the gossip that you may hear or be involved in, the things that... We can rise above that because that is not ours. As Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit are at work in our lives, we are different creations where the old is gone and the new has come. And as followers of Jesus, we don't have to live like others do. We have a new life with new hope and power and with new energy. I I, I love the image in in Scripture. It says how the Holy Spirit comes and lives in us. Did you ever think of that before? How does the Holy Spirit make you holy? Well, the Holy Spirit lives in you. What? He is present in you. He empowers you to live holy lives, pleasing to God. You are not doing it on your own. When a challenging situation comes up, you're not going at it alone. The Holy Spirit is there helping you navigate whatever you find yourself engaged in. And God wants everyone to know these things. Everyone. He sent his son. Jesus was here for 30-some years. It's 32, 33 years. He was here, walked on this planet. But then he died and rose again and was ascended into heaven. So how does the message continue after Jesus is gone? Well, that answer is easy, through you and me. And, and, and Paul writes this in Corinthians. You, your lives are a letter written in our hearts. Everyone can read it and recognize our good works among you. Clearly, listen to this. Clearly, you are a letter from Christ. This letter is written not with pen and ink, but with the spirit of the living God. You yourself is a letter from Christ that the Holy Spirit has written on your heart. Everything you do, the way you engage with others, shows people who your God is. When you greet somebody or say hello to somebody who's looking like they're having the worst day of their life, when you say hello, you're showing them who your Jesus is. Liam, when you're in in Lego Club and you're hanging out with your friends at Lego Club and you're living your life for Jesus, you are telling the kids there that there's a better way. 
when you're selected, she's gone. Was she raptured? I hope not. When Peyton is selected to be a part of what's going on at her high school to welcome new kids, she has an opportunity for her life to shine in front of them and to tell them who Jesus is as the Holy Spirit writes a love letter on her heart for the world to see. And the same can be true of you. When you do, when you walk in the face of whatever is happening around you and you stand for what is right and just and pure and true, empowered by the Holy Spirit, he writes a love letter on your heart to tell the world that there's a better way. That's why this is so good. It's not always easy. Goodness, it's not easy. But as we walk with Jesus, as we understand that the Father, Son, and Spirit are are moving and alive in our world, and we accept what Jesus did on the cross as we're empowered by the Spirit, the love letter written on your life should be encouraging to all who take time to read it. And that's what sets us apart as followers of Jesus. That's what makes us different. Peter continues, may God give you more and more grace and peace. I'm going to pray that over us in just a moment. May God continue to give us more and more grace and peace. Church family, this is what I think we need to be about as the followers of Jesus to understand that we are chosen by God. He didn't choose dogs, rats, cats, guinea pigs. and He chose us to be made holy through his Holy Spirit's work in our lives. To understand that Jesus' sacrifice cleanses us from all our iniquities, all our sin, and we can stand firm on that. And as we do, we live spirit-empowered lives that are attractive to those in our world. That's what we're about as a church. So in your little bags, kids, there's party poppers. Don't do it yet. But if you have one and you're comfortable doing so, I want all the kids to come right up here grab your little party popper. You don't have to say or do anything. I'm not going to pick on you other than I'll give you instructions when you get here. So grab your party poppers if you have them. Come on up. Oh, yeah. Just stand right here, right down there. Yep, that's good. That's good. Don't pull it yet. Just hold on. Just get ready. That's right, kiddos. Spread out. We're going to end a prayer in a way we've never done here before, other than last service. It is New Year's Eve, right? So I'm going to pray, and then I need all of you to help me count down from 10 to 1. Not yet. We're going to say Happy New Year, and when we do, you guys need to pop your party poppers, okay? And we're going to celebrate New Year in this way. Do you guys got it? All my helpers? All right, so let me pray. And then we'll count down. I've never done this before, so here we go. Yeah. Here. I'll I'll read it just as you are right here. How's that? Okay, let's pray. God, I pray for Revive Wesleyan. For each person here to know that you have chosen them, you have made them holy, and you have cleansed them from their sin by the power of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May you give us more and more grace and peace as we live our lives as letters to others, showing them your love. Father, I pray that we would live different than others in the world, standing firm on what we know to be true of you. Lord, I pray for all these little ones or all these who are gathered up here. Lord, write letters on their hearts so that others can see and know who you are. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, everybody, let's count down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 
four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! Yay! Just pull the string. Your dad has fireworks. Don't you know how to... All right. Ask your dad. He'll help you. All right. Thank everybody. Thank these, little, these kids for coming up here and helping. Happy New Year. Let's continue in our worship this morning as we sing praises to our God.